What's up folks? This is part six of the introduction to modern web development and in this one we're going to look at Vue.js. Vue is a reactive UI front-end framework library. Think of it like React or Angular or similar libraries. And the main point of libraries like Vue and React and others is to make your life easier as a developer. The end user doesn't really affect them. You could make anything you can do in React or Vue or Angular or Ember or anything else without using any of those things. You can make the exact same end product. But these reactive frameworks make the job of making that end product so much easier. Now, the end user would see the benefit in terms of you can build this faster and you can build it a lot more reliably and upgrade it a lot faster. But the main benefits of a UI framework like Vue are for you, the developer. It makes your life a lot easier. So here's my plan. We're going to take this website we laid out, which as far as I'm concerned is ready for production, but you people are picky. So we're going to add to it a map in the main area. And on the side, we're going to add some information. So when we click on something on the map, we'll see some more information about it over there. Now I'm going to use parks in Mecklenburg County, and I'm using QGIS here, and this is from a shape file I downloaded. I'll put a link to where you can get that shape file in the uh, notes in the blog post. I'm just going to take these po points, and I'm going to right-click and go Export, Save Features As, GeoJSON. We're going to put it in the Source Assets folder in the project we've been working on. I'm just going to call it Parks. Make sure it's saving to lat long, EPSG 4326, WGS84. And quarter precision, I like to honk it down, especially for a point to around six, because 15 is just a lot more precision than you need. And for things like this, size equals slow. So you want to get these things as small as you can. So we'll go OK. I made that GeoJSON file, but there's a lot of crap in this GeoJSON file that we don't want to see. It has shape.area and shape.length for Pete's sakes. So I'm going to right click on that GeoJSON file, go to properties, head to the source fields tab, click edit, and I'm going to select all of them with control A. And with my control key still pressed, I'm just going to pick the ones that I want to keep. So I can unhighlight those. Park ID, park name, park address, and maybe park type. The rest of them, I'm going to hit this delete button up here. I'm going to save that. And now we have a nice and tidy, tiny GeoJSON file. Perfect. We can see it over here under Assets in our cold code project folder. I'm going to rename it to just JSON instead of GeoJSON, because after all, it is just JSON, and it'll make our developer tooling and other stuff it won't, won't have any hassles trying to figure out what that is. So now we've got our GeoJSON. What do we need to do next? We need to load that into our map. We actually need to load that into our Vuex store. Vuex is something that you don't have to use, but even in tiny projects, I use it now because tiny projects can grow. Vuex is just a centralized data store for data that your components can share. And you can do this with just a plain old uh, JavaScript object, but then you don't have any control over how it mutates and changes and it can get to be a bit of a mess. So Vuex is what we use for state management for all our components. I'm going to import that JSON here. Uh, assets parks.json and under state for our Vuex store, I'm just going to make parks, and we're going to assign it to those GeoJSON parks. So look at that. We're cooking with gas. Now I actually need to drop out of my development server for a moment, so we need to install a couple things. We need to npm install leaflet. I'm going to use leaflet here because it is this, this isn't a tutorial series about using mapping libraries, and leaflet is the absolute easiest mapping library in the universe to use. So we're just going to go with that. And we also need to install 
a package called Leaflet Default Icon Compatibility. There's a issue in Leaflet's CSS where it struggles with bundlers like uh, like Webpack, and this will essentially fix it. So I'll uh, mark those to save to the project dependencies, and off it'll go. All right, we're going to npn run serve to crank this back up again. Happy days. Now we are going to make our first view component. We are going to make our map. So I'm going to go to our components folder and right click, make a new file. Just call it map.view. And a view file looks like this. It has three sections. It has a template section, and that's how you want things to be rendered out to your web page. A script section, which is where you're running all your JavaScript. And a style section where you can tell this component how to style itself. And by default it has this keyword scope. And what that does is the CSS in this view file will only apply to this particular file and not leak out anywhere else. This makes it really easy to build a reusable component because you can pick it up and, and drop it somewhere else, else and, and you're, you're off to the races. So let's go ahead and make our catcher. Give this an ID of map. And we want to give our map a size. Otherwise, we'll get the zero pixel map that drives first time leaflet and other users nuts. Map will go with, if I can spell it right, 100%. And percent, percent, percent. And we are going to give it a height of, say, 500 pixels. And let's just make sure everything's happy. We'll just put a little high there for now. We're going to go over to main.js. We don't need this app.view anymore. We're going to import map from dot slash components and map.view. So now let's just reuse this bit of code that we commented out before. Make this map. And the mount point is your catcher for this view component. And I like to use a kind of nonsense, nothing uh, HTML tag. Certainly don't have to. Now it's giving us a message saying it can't find that tag, so we haven't added it to the page. So we'll go over to main, and we'll change that to sc-map. And now we have this high over here, which lets us know this component is loaded and running. But that's not exactly what we want it to do. So back over to this leaflet default icon compatibility library. We're going to use the instructions directly from it. So it's going to fix up our leaflet for us. And before we do our export, we're just going to put them right in there as is. And if you don't do this with this compatibility library, you'll get some error messages and your the default leaflet marker won't draw, which is why we want that. Let's give our component a name. This makes it easier to debug. And there is a uh, function called mounted in view. And mounted just runs as soon as that component is mounted. So that's the perfect place to initialize a map. And to do that, let's just grab, I was looking through leaflets docs, because I haven't used leaflet in quite a while. Let's make a map here. And I'm going to change the set view to where you would see Mecklenburg's Parks, otherwise it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. And this would be like negative 80.84. 
and set it down to view zoom level around 10. So now we go over here. Hey, Mecklenburg County. Now the OpenStreetMap tile resource is awesome and it's great they have it, but it's a little bit slow. So I would go over to the uh, leaflet providers demo, which has all kinds of background layers you can use or base layers. And we're just going to give uh, Ezra some love here and use theirs because it looks kind of parky and it's very fast. So now it draws pretty much instantly, which is a little bit nicer for us having to refresh this page quite a bit as we develop. So let's add ourselves some GeoJSON. Well, that GeoJSON was part of our store. And to access that as part of our store, we're going to pull it into a computed property. And this, this isn't really a whole view tutorial. I've done those before and there are lots of great tutorials on view and that's a rabbit hole you can spend hours and hours going down. This is just basically how to make these components at a very high level. Let's say computed name, we'll call it parks and we're going to return this and our keyword to get into our store is dollar sign store. And we'll go state and parks. So now that should give us a parks variable we can use in our project uh, that'll have that GeoJSON. So one handy tip I do when I'm doing a React or view is when I have a function of any decent size, this is always at the top. And this, uh, the, this keyword in JavaScript can get robbed from you. Like if I used it inside here, that this would be referring to this tile layer and not our, our component. So I use this to refer to this in a way that it doesn't get robbed and therefore drive me crazy. Now, GeoJSON. Of course, I have all this memorized. I'm just looking it up for your benefit. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what you're saying. Okay. I think it's pretty straightforward to add GeoJSON. We'll change this to score this dot parks and see if anything exploded. Ah, look, we got the pox. Doesn't do anything. We're going to fix that. Now you can add some options when you load this layer in the leaflet. One of those would be on feature, is it on feature add? Da -da 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 on each feature. You're going to see some live coding here, folks. And that's going to be a function that gets the feature, the layer. And when each one's loaded, let's just bind a pop up so we can see that our content's coming through. And we would want to use something we have like PRK name. Go back over here. Look at that, cooking with gas. Smart people. Now, here's what we want to do next. When I pick one of these, I want it to set a value in our store that our other component can use. That value in our store is going to be the selected data that I, I want I want to use. So how we're going to do that is called a a mutation in our store. And mutation, you can name it what you want, or I'll just go. Well, we have to have a state we want to mutate, don't we? We'll go selected. We'll just set that to null because we don't want anything selected when we first start. We'll go selected and you explicitly call these as a mutation or a state, which is why you can use the same values here. And your first thing is always going to be passing in the state and the next is anything you want to set here. And we'll just do um, some properties that we're going to set. Here we'll just go 
state dot selected equals props. What we'll pass into that uh, oh, that's just one of my plugins yelling. It's nothing nothing to worry about. What I'll do for that is we're going to make a click. You're not on click function event. And let's do two things. Let's zoom into it. We'll go map.set view feature dot uh, geom is it geometry? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking into my my GeoJSON. Feature dot geometry dot coordinates, and you'll have to flip these around because uh, GeoJSON does long lat. Uh, Leaflet likes lat long. Mapbox GL likes long lat. Every client probably likes uh, your money. Ha! <laughs> See what I did there? Okay, so that should zoom in when we click. See if that works. Not really. Do we need to refresh this? No. Okay. Let's see. Feature.geometry. Let's see what we got in this parks.json. Feature properties geometry coordinates. Well, that looks good. Hmm. Oh, you know, it is working. I just had it, didn't have it zoom anywhere. Ha! <laughs> Live coding. That's what we're doing. So that's good. Oh, don't give me that. Map not available. Ezra. Okay. So now what I want to do is use that, that mutation to set the selected value. So we're going to do and underscore this because if we tried regular this here, it would have robbed our stuff. This dot dollar sign store and commit is how you call a mutation. You have the mutation you want and then what you want to pass it. In this case, we're going to pass it a JSON object. We're going to do a name and call it feature.properties.prk name. We'll give it, actually, you know what? We don't have to do all that. Let's just, uh, we can just patch it, pass it feature.properties. I'll just get everything. Smart. All right, click one of these. Now, one thing I recommend if you're doing uh, work with Vue is to install the Vue developer tools. They're available for Chrome and Firefox. And they're quite nice. So now we go in here and look at our development tools. Relaunch this. Mm, where'd we go? Oh, you know what? Oh, where did it go? Did I disable my view extension? Live coding. Oh, well, that would do it. Now we've got our view here. If we go over and look, we can see our components. We can see what's going on in the components. We see our computed property there. The next icon over is our uh, is our view X. So when we click here, we've got a payload going as an object with that stuff from our, our properties and it's going into selected. So if we look at, at our state right now, we'll see we have our parks and we have our 
selected, which is an object. Perfect. We're cooking with gas. All right. Now we set this to our store, so another view component could use that. Let's make another component. Right click component, new file, info.view, go into there and go uh, set things up. And we'll just do a sanity check. So we've got that set up. We'll go back into index.html, make that sidebar a catcher. Let's call it sc.info. And then we'll go into main.js and we'll just make another component for that. It's going to go into sc.info. Let's import that component. Import info from slash components slash info.view. Let's call that info. Hit save. We've got hi there over here. So we know the U component is up and loading and happy. But that's not very useful. So here's what we're going to do. First, we only want this to show something if we have selected something on our map. How you can do that is called a v-if, and it's kind of like an if statement. If it evaluates to true, it'll show and render this content. If it doesn't, it won't. But we need something to check. So let's go to our, into our component and let's give it a name. Call it info. And let's give it a computed value from our store. We'll say... Uh, Selected and it's going to return from this dollar sign store dot state dot selected. Now we can just check if that exists, if it's not null. So you notice this load, when it first loads now, there's nothing over here because selected is set to null. If we pick something, our map has used that mutation to set the selected. So now we've got this hi there over here. Isn't that awesome? So now that I have something selected, we can put in a little more information about it. Let's say uh, give an H3. And the template tags look a lot like handlebars, the double curlies. Uh, we can go selected.prk name. Then we can make a paragraph and go selected.prk type, maybe a carriage return, and then selected.prk adder, I think was for address. Let's try that. All right. Reload this page. You notice sometimes when you're working with a map library, Webpack is trying its best to keep that page from having to refresh. It's injecting stuff, but sometimes it'll inject stuff with one of these complex mapping libraries and not quite work, and you'll still have to go refresh the page yourself. Now, as we click on these, you notice our information area over here changes right along with it. So we are have our bindings. Uh, Let's remember one of these, because I want to show you something. NCPK, right on the standing desk here. NCPK, all caps. All caps, it's an angry part. So we've got these components set up, and we've, we're loading GeoJSON. We've got this nice background that looks bumpy. Uh, bumps are what passes for relief in Mecklenburg County. As we click them, our information over here is changes. Every once in a while, I get this map not available. I'm not, I'm not sure if there's a particular reason for that or not. But yeah, we're in good shape. So let's do this. Let me show you something neat. Suppose for whatever reason, we don't want that info area there anymore. We can go to our main.js, where our info is. We can just comment this out. 
right now. And everything else still works perfectly fine. Or we could do the opposite. Supposing we commented out our map. Sidebar is working perfectly fine. It's not showing anything. If we went to our store and gave it a default selected of that, uh, say, PR name, uh, PRK type. Me. <laughs> oh, P R K editor uh, wild stuff. You know, I'm just typing crap. Now the sidebar is actually working perfectly fine. If any other component anywhere we wrote modified the selected state, it would appear over here on the side. This map and sidebar are totally independent from one each other. They, they have no interdependencies. They are sharing the same store, but beyond that, they don't touch each other. And that makes your life as a developer so much easier. You can make changes in a component safely, and you know it's not going to go eat your other stuff. And that's one way using Vuex really helps, is you see exactly where, where your mutation is is centrally stored, and you, can, you know what changes it and how it changes. It makes your life as a developer so much easier and faster and safer. But that's using Vue. We've got a UI library going. Let's go ahead and make this back into its regular state. I don't know. I think this whole project is ready to ship. I would deliver this to a customer if it was a government one because, you know, these are not picky people. Uh, they'd probably ask me to put 57 odd buttons on it for, for no reason. But beyond that, this is good. So let's wrap this up here. We looked at view and adding those components. We're going to have one last shot, one last video in this introduction to modern web development. And that's going to be the finishing touches. We're going to look at building for deployment different ways to do that. We're going to look at setting it up for, uh, there's a little change we have to make if we're putting it in say a subfolder instead of its own uh, root URL. Uh, we're gonna look at squishing images and progressive web apps and, and testing for performance and accessibility and all that stuff. Coming up next time, see you later, bye-bye.